And what we're going to see here is that God chose the fast. You didn't choose the fast. Nobody else chose the fast. God is the one who instituted and chose the fast to do certain things. This is the second in a series that we have been doing on fasting. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 16, Jesus said, when you fast. So we know that you should fast because he said when instead of if. Then he goes on in Mark chapter 2, he said, when you fast is when the bridegroom is taken away. Jesus was talking about himself as the bridegroom, and we know that he is now taken away. He went up, he sat on the right hand of the Father, and then sent the Holy Ghost into the earth. Now we're in that dispensation, the dispensation of the Holy Ghost who's God in the earth today. And that's also, therefore, the dispensation where we fast. This is that day when we fast that Jesus talked about. This is that day, the dispensation of the Holy Ghost, where we fast. You will fast in that day, Jesus said. Not only do we walk with him more effectively, but we can partake of the open rewards that Jesus talked about. He said you would be rewarded openly. See, now a lot of, I don't understand, some people would say, no, I don't need to do that. Well, Jesus said there are certain things that come by fasting, and you think you're going to get them some other way. You're not going to. You've got to have them through the operation of fasting. There's open rewards that come only through the operation of fasting. There's ways of walking with the Holy Ghost that only come through the operation of fasting. We saw that even in Jesus' life, that the Holy Ghost came on him and responded to him in a way that he didn't before Jesus did his 40-day fast. But we know we should fast. We know when we should fast, which is now and in our day. And here we go. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 58. Glory be to God forever. And let's look at verse 6. Is not this the fast that I have chosen? And what we're going to see here is that God chose the fast. You didn't choose the fast. Nobody else chose the fast. God is the one who instituted and chose the fast to do certain things. Let's read on to loose the bands of wickedness. So God chose the operation of fasting to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke. How are we going to get those things? Well, I want to get them some other way. Well, you can, but God chose this method, and this method of fasting will work for anyone, anyone who will do it. But you have to do it, right? You're not going to have it if you don't do it. So, is not this the fast that I have chosen? This is God's method of loosing people, of getting people, look at this, set it, loosing the bands of wickedness, undoing heavy burdens, letting the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke. He goes on to say, your light will break forth as the morning. Verse 8, your health shall spring forth speedily. When you call, the Lord shall answer. You cry, he, he will say, here I am. When? When you fast. God chose the fast. He instituted the fast. And when we learn how to fast and do it effectively as our discipleship in following the Holy Ghost, we will have all of these open rewards. This is something that's built into our physiology. God chose it. He chose it from the beginning. He made us this way with the capacity to go without food for many days. He built it into us. And there's a reason for it. And we'll get into a lot of those things as we go on here. But many people are hitting a wall in their life, either financially or mentally or physically in their physical body, with, you know, wrestling with some kind of a, a physical illness or even maybe in ministry. You've hit a wall. You seem like you can't go any farther. Well, God has a method for you to break down that wall and to go farther than you have ever been before. What is that called? It's called fasting. And when we can learn how to do it, 
and actually do it and get good at it, we'll be able to break through walls very quickly. I've said this before, if there is a catch-all in the things of God, this would be it. Fasting, you can even see it here where he said you're going to unloose the bands of wickedness, the heavy burdens, the oppressed go free, break every yoke. Well, that's a catch-all. Every means every. Learning how to fast will help you to break every yoke. So, God chose this method, not me. And if we're in that day, and we are, that we should fast, especially in our walk with the Holy Ghost, he's the one who chose it. So we're going to need to continue. If we're going to go with God, we're going to have to go with the way that he chose. Let's look over at 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 27. But God hath chosen the what? The foolish things of the world to confound the wise. This is foolish. Well, how could, uh, you know, not eating for a period of time and just drinking water, how could that do anything? God chose that method to confound the wise. God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things that are mighty. And base things of the world, things which are despised as God chose. You know, it's one of the things that's despised is fasting. You get into the medical community and say, hey, well, I got healed by this particular problem by fasting, and they're going to despise you for even saying it. It's despised by the wise of the world. What is fasting? God hath chosen it. Now, do you remember in Isaiah where it says, ha is not this the fast that I have chosen? So God chose the fast. Here he's saying, Base things of the world, things that despise God has chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are. Many times the things that are are problems, financial problems, spiritual problems, demonic problems, health problems, social problems, all these kind of problems, mental problems. God chose a method to confound the wise. He Look at this. He says, and things which are not to bring to naught the things that are. So to make that thing that is, that problem, to bring it to naught, God has chosen a thing that isn't. Guess what isn't? You eating. You see, you're not eating. God chose the thing that is not to bring to naught the thing that is. So God chose the method of you not eating eating something for a period of time to bring to naught the thing that is. I hope I'm getting that across. The thing that is not is you not eating. The thing that he's bringing to naught is the bondage, the oppression, the financial problem, or whatever it is, the physical problem, the thing that's plaguing you. Are you getting this? God chose this method. God chose the fast to do these things. Right? And so if God chose the fast to do these things, and I'm going to say that I walk with God, and he has a method of doing things, then what am I going to have to choose? If I want to choose to walk with God, I'm going to have to choose to fast and to learn about fasting and learn about the discipline of fasting and be a disciple of fasting if I'm going to want to walk with God who already chose this method. So you must choose. I can't choose for you. If I could, I could say, hey, okay, go on a, go on a, a three-day fast right now. I can't choose that for you. You have to choose that you're going to follow God in this way, right? It's an act of will. And one of the things that's really good about these kind of messages, last week's and this week's message, and the other weeks that follow when we put this in a series, is it's going to give you faith to actually do it, but it'll also strengthen your will, your soulish parts, your will, your emotions, and your mind will be able to hold on to something rather than, you know, holding on to the sandwich. You'll be able to hold on to something else with your mind and you'll be able to partake of the benefits. So I can't make you to do, I can't make you do this. It's going to have to be an act of your will and following God and choosing to do things by his method. Joshua 
2415 says choose you this day whom you will serve so you you got to do the choosing god lays things out for you and he says this is my method this is the way i chose right so you have to choose the way that god chose for you to serve him joshua 24 15 choose you this day and by the way there is no good day to start fasting something always will come up somebody will bake you your favorite thing come knocking on your door as soon as you choose to start fasting there's never a good day it's just today that's why it says today who are you going to serve you serve god today right so we have to learn about these things we get to practice these things we get to do these things and when we do we'll start to learn about the open benefits i hope i can get this across so many times people uh, i'll be saying things and i can tell that they're just not getting it because they've never done it so there's certain things that you won't even be aware of things that i'll say that might come back to your memory while you're in the midst of a fast that you just won't understand until you step out and begin to obey god and do what he wants you to do and yes he wants you to fast now how can you say that it's very simple this is god's method we're in the day of the Holy Ghost. We're in the day that the bridegroom was taken away. That if we're going, we're in that day. And Jesus said we would fast in that day, in that time. It would be part of what we do. So that's how I could say, oh, God wants you to fast. He wants you to fast. And he doesn't want you to just fast. He wants you to learn about fasting. He wants you to incorporate it into your walk with the Holy Ghost. So you can learn how to do a full 24-hour day fast. And then you can do a three-day fast. Meaning you stop eating one day and you for three days you do nothing but drink water. And then you'll learn how to do a 10-day fast. Which I think is what everybody should at least get themselves into and be able to do once maybe even twice a year why would you say that because it's part of what we do it's how we can walk with the holy ghost more effectively and have the open rewards that we need to function correctly in the earth anyway every fast i don't care if you're doing a, a 21 day fast guess what day it starts on the first day so I don't care how long your fast is going to be. You got to get good at doing the first day. And then guess what you get good at? You get good at the second day. But you get all it all starts with the first day. So everybody can start. Everybody can learn. Everybody needs to get really good at being able to fast that one full day. And then they can get better at going two days and three days. Everyone can fast. Anyone can fast. You can choose to fast. You choose to fast. You make the choice. I don't make the choice for you. I can't force you to eat and I can't force you not to eat. That's why it's such a personal thing between you and God because you are the one making the choice. Now, if we look at Genesis chapter 3, Genesis chapter 3, we'll see something very interesting here. As we talk about needing to get into certain benefits, having certain bond. Where did all the bondages and sickness and poverty and, and all these terrible things, where did they come from? They came in from the beginning when Adam and Eve sinned. Genesis chapter 3, verse 6. And when the woman saw that the tree, she saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and also gave unto her husband with her, and he did what? He ate. Look at that. So here we go. We're at the beginning of sin was an act of their will to eat something. So isn't it interesting that God chose as a method to get people delivered from all of these things that came in from that initial willful act is the willful act of not eating. I suppose it's not, I mean, it's, it's pretty obvious when you begin to see it, when you go learn how to fast, but God asks you to not eat so that he can take away all the things that came in through eating. 
So anyone can fast, but it starts with not eating. Yeah, I got news for you. You're never going to be able to fast if you think you're going to fast and eat at the same time. See, it begins, the fast begins when you stop eating. And the fast ends when you begin eating again. I'm going to get into the more of this about the mechanics of it uh, next week. But what we're dealing with here is we see that God chose this method. And now you have to choose this method, meaning choose to begin a fast, choose to not eat. So it's the act of your will and you're beginning to step into having all of those things from the curse, having all of those things that came in from the fall be removed from you. It's a wonderful thing. God chose this method. It may be a foolish thing to some, but it's certainly not foolish to those people who've put it into practice and have learned things by it. You may say, I don't know if I can do it. I've got news for you. You can do it. Anyone can do it. God put this into you. God gave you the capacity to do it. He hardwired your body so that it would thrive when you do it. You're not going to get so hungry you die. You're actually going to get hungry and then you're going to, the hunger will stop and then you'll become more alive than you've ever been before. You'll be more awake than you've ever been before. Truly awake, truly alive. It's hard to tell people on these things if they haven't experienced it from their, for themselves, but you will experience it. So God isn't going to ask you to do something that you can't do. That would be unjust of him. He wired you for it so that you have a way to get out from under all of that stuff that you've been struggling with. This is his method. You simply need to take up his method upon you and learn how to walk with him in it. This is part of our discipleship with the Holy Ghost. It's part of what we do in this day and in this hour. And I'll get more into the mechanics of it, what you do, what you don't do, what happens, what doesn't happen in the future. Probably starting to that next week. But remember, every fast of every length begins with the first day with stopping eating that first meal and then it continues until you eat another meal and then you can get good at this and we can get trained at this and we can walk with God not only uh, better with him but we can walk in benefits that we have not even experienced yet let me pray for you holy ghost i thank you that these people their ears are open and they're able and they're willing to take these steps of faith and enter into the great things that you have for them and fasting is one of the ways that they can enter in we thank you for it in jesus name amen Drop out.